I'm at the headquarters of the Royal Society for Improving Natural Knowledge, better known as the Royal Society. It's the country's preeminent scientific institution, and one of its most famous fellows was, of course, Charles Darwin, and he's the reason we're here today. And this is an original edition of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, first published in 1859, 150 years ago. We're in the library of the Royal Society to discuss the impact of Charles Darwin's book on the worlds of religion and science. And I'm going to be speaking to Dr. Richard Forty, a paleontologist and fellow of the Royal Society and author of Life, A Natural History of the First Four Billion Years of Life on Earth, and Dry Storeroom Number One, A Secret History of the Natural History Museum. Dr. Richard Forty, thank you very much for joining us. Now, The Origin was one of the most readable of the scientific works, wasn't it? Well, it had an immense popular appeal when it was published. Mm -hmm. uh, it sold out and reprinted several times. And people, of course, were used to Darwin as a writer because he'd already published uh, the account of his voyage on the Beagle, mm -hmm. which was also a very good-selling book. For anybody, I'm sure there aren't many people out there who don't know, but could you just sort of... Why was Darwin so revolutionary? What was... Well, he put down in very clear scientific terms why species had descended mm -hmm. from an ultimate common ancestor or how species arose by one thing evolving into another by a series of intermediates. So he sketched out the great chain of life for the first time and he not only did that, but he gave a mechanism for it, right. natural selection. Because evolutionary theory had been around for a while, hadn't it? He didn't really sort of... He didn't invent it. It, it, was a, mm -hmm. it was a notion that existed, mm -hmm. but it wasn't quite respectable. Right. Uh, in fact, it was downright dangerous in some quarters. Mm -hmm. And he'd been anticipated a few years ago uh, by a book which had been wildly uh, panned in the intellectual press. So he had to be very careful to get it right. But this was a really well-argued book. Wasn't he known when it came out as the most dangerous man in England? Well, there's a, I think, a slight exaggeration about how scandalous it was. There were a lot of people, biologists, even men of the church, who were quite ready for the book. Um, there were a, a vigorous opposition, mm -hmm. as it were, grew up around it. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily a majority. And the people that uh, uh, Thomas Henry Huxley, for example, Darwin's bulldog, uh, welcomed the book with open arms as explaining so much in nature. And how did that, that marry with... I mean, I know that Darwin was considering entering the church himself, wasn't he, at, at one stage. Um, how, how did he tally what he discovered with, with his own religious belief? I think in the, in the origin, he was rather careful to always put it on one side mm. uh, or to at least give a nod into the idea of an ultimate creator. Mm -hmm. uh, the point was that that creator was not interfering with the natural processes of evolution on Earth. Um, what it did, of course, have the effect of doing was shuffle the role of the creator ever into a more peripheral position. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a process which, once started, of course, didn't stop. And what was the impact? What do you think? Where, where would we be today without Darwin? It's almost impossible to overstate the importance that Darwin has for the subsequent development of science, particularly biological science. Um, for example, all that we know about the genome, about DNA, um, arises from Darwin's theory. If we could somehow rewrite history and write out all that stuff, um, the scientific world would be utterly different today, and so would the medical one. You mm -hmm. know, we'd wouldn't have half the um, treatments that we have, which are a result of understanding more about wh how organisms really work. Do you think we'd have got there eventually? Would, would a, somebody else have come up with it? That's an interesting question. Yes, I think the answer to that has to be yes, mm. because uh, even though Darwin was the man who put the ideas down so well on paper, ideas do have their time. And, of course, it's well known that his um, colleague, Alfred Russell Wallace, had come to rather similar conclusions at about the same time. And if you look around the world, there were other transformationist ideas kind of bubbling up. So he was, in a sense, the man of the moment as well. But of course, that doesn't diminish his achievement because what he did, as he'd done in other realms of science too, was 
make the argument so incredibly well. Although he wasn't happy, was he, with his prose? Wasn't it? I think he worked at it. Mm -hmm. uh, when he's good, he's very, very good, mm. just as a writer. Uh, but he isn't always very, very good. And sometimes to modern eyes, I suppose, some of the just writing can seem a little hard going. Do you enjoy it? Do you still go back and...? Yes, I do. But of course, scientists tend to go back to kind of uh, um, check the veracity of what they think Darwin said, uh, because it wasn't always quite what you think it is. Yeah. For example, the, the phrase which most people know, uh, the, the survival of the fittest, uh, wasn't even Darwin's at all. <laughs> really? It was invented by, a, well, actually, a, an economic theorist just a few years later. So what did Darwin actually say? Because, I mean, that sort of summed up the crux of his argument, wasn't it? Well, it was about um, the preferential success in breeding and producing offspring, mm -hmm. which is a subtly different thing uh, than the survival of, of the fittest with its slightly sort of bullying connotations. There are all kinds term, of ways. Yeah. It's cruder, yes. Mm. So there are all kinds of ways to be a, to successfully outbreed your competitors. Of the two books you have that you've um, written, which is the most relevant to Darwinism? Well, I think probably my history of life on mm -hmm. Earth is directly relevant to the story of descent, and that tells you from, in broad outlines, the the story of life from the first cell up to the appearance and evolution of man. And if Darwin was alive today, what would you ask him? How did he manage to have so many clever ideas? <laughs> Dr Richard Forty, thank you very much.